Hello everyone. So in this lesson, we are going to start taking a look at some of the interesting ways that we use the verb come. So to start off, what I want to do is look at some of the meanings that we associate to the verb come in normal everyday speech. And this is a very interesting verb, in my opinion, because it does have many different meanings and we do use this verb in many different ways. You will also find this verb is used in lots of phrasal verbs, lots of collocations and quite a few idioms as well. But let's just start off with looking at some of the basics of the verb, how it's used every day. So one of the most common ways we use the verb come is to talk about travel but more specifically, the direction of travel towards someone or something, or travel with someone. So, uh, for example, um, are you coming to the cinema? Are you coming to the cinema? Um, so here the verb is asking, will you be traveling? perhaps in my car, with me, to the cinema, yeah? So it's kind of used as an invitation. Are you coming to the cinema? Would you like to come to the cinema? But it's really used to talk about the direction of travel towards the cinema with another person, yeah? There is a car coming. So this is a different example because it's not me traveling with somebody else. This is an object coming towards me. So there's a car and it's coming towards me. Yeah, so there is a car coming. Similarly, here comes Jack. Ah, oh, there's Jack. I can see Jack and he is coming towards us. Yeah, he is walking, perhaps, or towards us. Um, sorry, we can't come to dinner on Friday. We can't come. So we're saying, no, we will not be traveling towards you or even with you, yeah? Okay, and um, finally, I've come to see Jack. So I have traveled, I have um, walked or traveled in a direction and I have arrived at a place and the reason for doing that is because I wanna say hello to Jack, yeah? So if, when you hear come, think initially, uh, in a lot of instances, travel towards or with somebody or something. But that's not all. We also use come um, when we arrive at a place. So for example, has the post come yet? Has the post arrived yet? Or we can just simply replace arrive with come. Has the post come yet? Um, to make it much more natural, a much more colloquial way. What time does the train come? Yeah. So you can see that the verb arrive can be replaced with the verb come in a more natural way to express these kind of issues. Now in the same way that we use this verb come to talk about travel towards something, we can actually use the same verb to talk about travel away from something. Um, so traveling away from something, even with somebody else as well. Uh, so for example, come outside and see the flowers. So you are in the house, I want you to come outside, move away from the house. Um, you might say to your children, come away from the water, it's dangerous. So move away from the water. Um, Nora Jones, some of you may know Nora Jones. She's, um, I think she's a famous American singer. She sang a song which was called Come Away With Me. Come Away With Me. And I think the song is all about Nora singing or asking somebody to leave where they are and go somewhere else. So travel away from, you know, a place where you are. So we're moving on to some other commonly used ways and very interesting ways we use this verb come. And these are to talk about the change, the changing state of something and to just describe things that just happen. Yeah, so change of state, 
and things that just happen. So changing state. So for example, when does the heating come on? Um, it's cold. No, then perhaps your heating is on a timer. So when does the heating come on? When does it change from being off to on? Um, and I imagine you have some pictures or paintings on the wall you don't like them. So you might say, those pictures will have to come down. Yeah, they are currently on the wall. They will have to come down. What I'm also hoping you will notice is that we're starting to see lots of phrasal verbs. Come on, come down are, are just some examples. There are lots, there are probably hundreds of um, phrasal verbs using uh, this verb come. Um, okay, so change of state. Um, when we're describing things that just happen, things that just occur in life. Um, for example, spring has come early. Yep, spring has come early. We all know spring, one of the four seasons, will arrive. Um, this year it has come early. Earlier than expected, I suppose is what that's saying. Um, the, announcement, the announcement came as a shock. And the announcement of her death came as a shock to me. Um, so when it happened, it was a shock to me. It came as a shock. Um, or an alternative, the opportunity came as a surprise. I was really surprised by this opportunity. The opportunity came as a surprise. Yeah, so we're using the verb to talk about things that change, changing from one state of being to another, and also just to describe things that happen. Now, another very interesting way that we use the verb come is to describe the order of events. So here's a very here's a very interesting question. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Which came first? Yeah, um, this is um, a, a very famous sort of um, question, a uh, quandary we might say. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Um, well, it's a famous question and it's a quandary that no one really knows how to answer because chickens come from eggs, but to get an egg, you need a chicken. So which came first, the chicken or the egg? We don't know. Um, but we're asking, we're using the verb come to ask, of, to ask about the order of events. Yeah. Um, April comes before May, which is true. January, February, March, April, May. April comes before May. August comes after July. May, June, July, August. Yeah, so we, we could use come to order um, the sequence of the days of the week, the months of the year. He came in second in the race. He came in second, um, he finished second, but we can say he came in second. So there you go, there's another phrasal verb for you. The Romans came before the Anglo-Saxons. The Romans came before the Anglo-Saxons. So again, that's ordering sequences of events. And it's very, um, it's very common for us to use the verb when we want to talk about the order or the sequence of things that we're talking about. Finally, let's take a look at using come to talk about things that exist or things that are available. So for example, um, do these come in any other colors? Do any other colours exist? Are any other colours available? Or is black my only choice? Okay. Um, people come in all shapes and sizes. All shapes and all sizes of people. Um, this camera comes with a carry case. So this camera there is available or, or exists, there exists a carry case for the camera. Phones don't come cheap. Phones don't come cheap um, because they're very expensive. So to talk about things that exist or are available, another example of being available, um, your boss at work might say to you, um, can you come here please? Yeah, can you come here? Can you come into my office for a minute? And although that could be used to describe the movement of direction that we spoke about before, it might also be asking, are you available? Do you have time or are you really, really busy? Um, can you come over here for a few minutes? No, I'm not available. 
I'm too busy. Yeah? Okay, so we've looked at many of the different ways that we use the verb come and many of the different reasons why we're using the verb come. Okay, um, but before we move on to looking at some specific phrasal verbs, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, link below this video or somewhere around this video where you're watching it, links to two YouTube videos that I want you to watch. The first one is the Nora Jones song, Come Away With Me, um, which I think it might be interesting for you to hear somebody singing or using the phrase come away with me and see if you can understand. Also, um, there's a Robbie Williams song called I've Come Undone. I've Come Undone. Very interesting phrasal verb. Watch the video about um, Robbie Williams, I've Come Undone, because we're going to be examining that phrasal verb uh, later on. 